Welcome to Excel with Mark and today what I'm going to be showing you is how to extract data based on the value of a drop down list. So let's get into this now. So the version of Excel that I'm currently in today is the Excel 365 and what we need to do then is first of all look at the data that we have and what we're going to do with this data is now turn this into a table to start off with. To do this, we can either click into the data and go up to the insert tab within Excel, or we can use the shortcut key using control and T, which is also going to turn this data to the table that we want. We need to make sure that we have the my table as headers highlighted. And then once we've done this, we can click the OK button. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can name our table. And we need to highlight the table so that we can see that up at the top here, we now get the table design tab show up. Once we've done this, then we can go across to the left hand side where it says table name, and we're just going to rename our table. We're going to name our table today sales data. Now that we've created our table and we've named it, we're going to create a list of all the unique values that we would want in our drop down. To do this, we're going to go and create a second sheet called lists. And then within that, we're going to get all of our unique values. To return all of our unique values within the state that we have, we're going to use the unique function. To reference the table that we've just inserted then, we're going to have the unique and we're going to have the open brackets. We can then go and select sales data within this once we see it in the drop down. We can then add a square bracket and open that up, which is then going to give us the option to select the column which we want within the table. And we can see here that we have branch. So we're going to select branch. And then once we've done, we're going to close the square bracket and then close the parentheses as well. Once we've done this, then we can see we can press enter and it's going to return all of our unique branches for us. If you don't like the order that your values are in, what you could also do is use the sort function and place the unique value within this. So we can put the sort function before the unique and that's going to make all of your data go alphabetically for you. What we're going to do now is then select the cell where we want the drop down menu to be. Once we've done that, we're then going to go to the data tab and we're going to select the data validation. Once we've done this, we need to go within the settings tab and we need to select that we want a list. So once we've done list, we can then go down to the source. And then what we're going to do is select the first value within the list sheet, which is cell A1. And once we've done that, we're then going to put the hash symbol after it. By adding the hash symbol, what this is going to do is refer to the whole of the data that's spilled over into other cells. So this refers to things like A2, A3, and so on. And if you were to add extra data into this, then because we've added the hash symbol, it would automatically add them into our drop down for us. So just to show you that this would definitely add it, I'm now going to go down to the bottom of the table and I'm going to add in a totally random couple of letters just to show you as an example so that they definitely stand out. And once we've added this, then we can see that it's now going to automatically add this into the list on both the list sheet. And also we can see now that if we go up and then click on the drop down, is also going to show up within our drop down list for us. We now want to start looking at populating our data within our table that we have here. And to do that, we're going to use the filter function and we're going to base this off of the value that we have selected within our drop down menu above. We can see here looking closely at the filter function that it has two mandatory arguments. We have the array and the include. And to start out with, then we're going to be looking at the array. And this is basically where we're going to find our data. Because we've named our tables earlier, we're able to just type it in here again. So we know that the name of our table is sales data. So we can just start typing that in and we should see that that pops up. And once we've done, we can then select it and press the comma. With the include then, what we can do is we can refer back to the table again. So we know that we need sales data and we now want to know what column we need within this. So we know that we need the branch. So we need a square bracket, select the branch option, and then we're going to put equal to, and then we're going to put the cell of where we have our drop down menu. And for me, I have this in I2. So I'm just going to put equals I2. 
We also have the optional argument at the end there, which we have now if it's empty and it can't return any values for us. As we've kind of linked everything already, it shouldn't be the case, but just in case, what I'm going to do is just type in nothing found here, just so that we have something to return just in case. We're then going to close the bracket and press enter. And by doing this, we should now see all of our data returned. With our filtered data now, we also have the option to add in a second drop down so that we can filter our data even further if we want to. So we're just going to move over into cell K and we're going to start to build this out. And for this, we're going to be looking at brands. So we know that we need the unique values of all the different brands that we want to be looking at. So we can go back onto the list sheet and we can create this here. So to do this, then we can follow the similar steps to what we did before. And in column D here, we're going to put equals, sort, and then we're going to do the open parentheses and we're going to pop the unique function within there. We're then going to have another open parentheses for the unique function. And in here, we're going to reference our sales data table. Once we've done this, we can then press the square brackets to open them. And we're now going to select the brand. We can then put the square bracket and we need to now put some close parentheses. So we need a close parentheses for our unique function. And we also need a close parentheses for the sort function. Once we've done this, then it should return all of our different brands that are unique for us. So as we did before, then we can move to the cell to the right and we can go up to the data tab into data validation and we can select the list option from the settings. And once we've done this, we can then build out our drop down menu for this. As we did before, we can press the equals. Going onto the list sheet, we can select the first cell, which is going to be D1. And then, as we did before, we can use the hash symbol on the end to just add anything that might dynamically add as we go through. So now we're going to break this down so that we have the opportunity to filter by both of the drop downs here. So clicking into the filter then the width that we have here, we can see that we need to use something similar to the AND function. So what we can do here then is we can see that we have all of this built up. So we have the sales data for the branch, which is equal to the cell I2. But what we need to do now is just close the bracket at the end of this and put a close parentheses. We're then going to put this multiplication symbol and then we're going to open the parentheses again. And we're going to put in sales data with an open square bracket we're now going to select what we want so we know that we want the brand we then need a close square bracket and then with the equals and the cell of where our drop down menu is we can then close the parentheses once you've done this then you should have your first criteria within the brackets followed by or multiplied by your second criteria within brackets and if you press enter at this point you should now be able to see both of your selections filtered out so that's all we're going to look at covering today. Hopefully this was really useful for you. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. And if you're looking for further Excel training, don't forget to check out my course on Udemy. It's free, so why not give it a go? Leave any reviews that you have of it and let me know how you think I could improve it at any way. Thanks a lot for watching and we hope to see you again soon.